Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Dork Forest. It's another live Dork Forest here at the Meltdown uh, com- uh, comic book store in Hollywood. And of course, we got Zach on, on the audio over here. And uh, let's give him a round of applause. Yay. And Meltdown, of course, always a good thing. And then, uh, and then we got uh, things like Vilmos, Mike Rickberg just sang that song, as you heard. And uh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And then uh, Patrick's going to fix the audio after, and Vilmos does the websites. And I'm Jackie Cation, and uh, the websites are JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. And sitting with me here with, this is, I think, uh, this might be some of the best numbers, I think, that I've done here at the live. <laughs> I can get 20 people. I can get 20 people out is what I'm saying. This can happen. It's a beautiful thing. I'm building an empire very, very slowly. <laughs> and uh, but sitting with me, of course, Michelle McNamara. Welcome back to the program. Hi, Jackie. Yeah. This is good times. I remember you did episode 50. People can go back and listen to that one, of course. Yeah. And, um, and it's true crime, truecrimediary.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I tried to listen to it, and I didn't know things. You were the one who ta- told me about the Zodiac Killer and, uh, here in 2011. You had never heard of the Zodiac Killer. I had never heard of the Zodiac <laughs> Killer. And I, had never, I, just, I don't know anything about uh, true crime because it's always scary. And so, uh, yeah. so but what I, but we're gonna, um, I took some questions from the interwebs okay. about true crime. Crime, and then I thought we'd update. Uh, did we figure out who uh, who killed all those couples in Golita? Remember that? We were talking about that a year ago. Um, I'm close. I'm close. Oh, you're close yeah. to finding out. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, what was happening was, I guess, was it the ear ons? Yes. Is that memory? Oh my oh, yeah. god. Oh yeah. Yes. I, I did a little bit of research. Uh, there was an ear ons uh, killer this is so rapist. So close to my heart. So please, <laughs> I mean, it is because you were we were raised here in California. I was not. Why, Kelf? Because a lot of your crimes, a lot of your unsolved crime interests. A lot of things, ha- weird things happen in California. It's clearly. a big state. It's a big yeah. state. A lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Maybe but that's no, this, this particular crime really interests me just because um, he is the worst. Basically, a lot of law enforcement would describe him as the worst unknown serial offender in modern American history. He raped 52 women and killed 10 people. And no one really, he has no notoriety. So it's like, compared to Zodiac, he's huge. Right. But Zodiac was kind of a show off y guy. He wrote letters and stuff like this. This guy, to me, is more terrifying because he didn't, he didn't want any, you know, attention. Oh, he didn't attention. need the cr- attention or no, credit. He's he just, just wanted like, to terrorize I have a job to people. do, which is to kill people and terrorize them. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, and the well, thing I'm that I was telling you there. on the website is that it was like the data mining aspect is really interesting to me, oh, too. Right. It's because, so he lived, he clearly lived in these three Sacramento. So um, Golita and Irvine. So it's really just a matter of like finding white men of the right 55 age. 55 and 62 who lived in these three places. And really that's just like who's going to stay up night after night figuring that out. Turns out you are, Michelle yeah. McNamara. <laughs> and you're going to, uh, because I remember you going, th- you were going through some cemetery in Golita. The weirdest thing I've done to do is, and I haven't gone through with it, but there is a suspect that I'm very interested in. <laughs> and I, and, um, really someone you're very interested in, in, and in, he lives in Idaho and he's married. And I know Iran's what, uh, shoe size and it's unusual for a man. It's like a slightly no, small. It's nine. Okay. And I have the been average very, shoe size, 10 and a half, like 10 and a half, yeah. Yeah, 11. So I've been very tempted to call and say, I have these shoes that are for, <gasps> this guy has a somewhat common name. So let's say it's John Smith. It's not John Okay. Smith. Thank um, God. So it, it, I'm trying to decide if it's between, for your husband or someone else, do you, does your husband have size nine shoes? <laughs> but the only thing keeping me back is that what if he, she says to him, someone was calling about your shoe size. Yeah. And then it's all blown. And, and yeah. then it's, there's, <laughs> oh my God, then you're hunted like it's some sort of movie of the week. Well, and the detectives would kill me because I just have totally. Oh, you tipped him. Yeah. Tipped him off. Yeah. 
All right, and you know the detectives? Have you met yes, some of the I detectives? Yes, I'm actually working on this as a bigger story, like a, a much bigger... I'm writing about this in, in a sort of magazine way, and so I've met with a lot of the detectives, and, and it's interesting. I mean, they are haunted by this case. I mean, it really, when you talk to law enforcement, it's the one they all want right. to solve. Because it's 52 people and then another 10? Yes. It's so ten, it's 52 and women it's, and then 10 more that and he ten killed. 10 couples. They were all couples, and they were kind of upscale couples. And there was the reason I think that a lot of them are really obsessed with this guy is there's a lot of like grudging admiration for him. It's weird when you talk to these detectives because he was kind of like a supervillain. I mean, he right. ran along fences, he would outrun people, he would be on your oh, roof. Like, like people would chase him yeah. and see him in the distance, like yeah. the, the guy with one leg or one arm or whatever that witness, the fugitive. Yeah. yeah, and he would do these really incredibly smart things, which I hate to admit it, but were incredibly smart. Like he would park his car just outside the normal police perimeter okay. and then steal a bike and go to the crime scene, do his thing, drop the bike and go back to his car so that if you, he knew that the police would only go a certain... So you, he would, they would never hear about a strange vehicle. Right. You know what I mean? So right. it, was, it was genius, a lot of the things he was doing. Right. And I'll tell Doesn't you mean that I won't find him. But. Right. And bike thieves, the worst people on the planet. <laughs> Let's talk well, to people in Portland, Oregon and have those guys. They will find him. I will say that I have... <laughs> I, I will have. I've never read about a serial killer that didn't start by stealing. Oh, really? Yes. They okay. all start that way. Gateway drug uh, yeah. to uh, to killing a bunch of people yeah. is, is is petty crime. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now I do have I do have some questions from okay, the internet sure. mm-hmm. that uh, that we can we can ask that uh, that Rangers of the Dork Forest have uh, have have, have uh, sent in. Uh, we got uh, Deborah Fay uh, said I'm fascinated by the fake Rockefeller guy who allegedly murdered his landlords in Pasadena and then moved east to create a new life as a Wall Street banker ultimately kidnapping his child uh i've never heard allegedly okay so i don't now do you know this case have you heard of this case okay what what what, what? (laughs) guess what i was doing like rereading harry potter like it's just like that's it's yeah. oxygen. So it's like, what what ticket? Did this happen in the 21st century? Yes, or? this okay. happened in the 80s. He was just like oh, a, okay. he was a germ. He was a guy. I mean, he it was one of those weird stories where he actually got nabbed by because it was a child custody issue, and he like sort of ran so off with his caught. kid. And then it was kind of like he had sort of lived by saying he was this Rockefeller for so long. And then when they went back and looked in his history, he had he was a tenant his um, of this family, these two, this couple that disappeared. Oh, okay. And then they ultimately he did get he oh. arrested. I'm not sure. Maybe someone else knows if it did actually go to trial. I don't think it did yet. Okay. But he did get arrested for it. So okay. he, he definitely was guilty. I mean, he was one of those people, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, he was those people who take on different identities. I'm not really sure. Yeah. You know. it's, uh, and, and, how, and if that was in the 80s, I wonder how viable that could be now. Right. You know, to do. I mean, we still don't have a national ID. I mean, you could, you could disappear. You could get off the grid. Move oh, to well, Arkansas. They found, oh well, I mean, the, they they went to build a pool in the backyard and they found one of the bodies. So oh. they do they do have a body. Okay. Um, but he's it's interesting to me in the sense that I'm always interested in people who seem to have killed once and then were clean for like 20 years. Oh. We, possibly. I mean, I, so that's always weird to me, like that you could keep that in your pants. I don't know. I mean, right, right. Like, how do you how do you kill somebody and then not? And then not do it again. Yeah. That actually is not where I was going to go with that, but that's where I went with that. It's, uh, no, but we don't. We don't. You know, you often don't. Um, you know, the thing that was in the news recently is the Aton Paths, which probably a lot of people know about. That was in Aton. New York. It's this. It was kind of the first kid that was on like the milk cartons. Oh, okay. And he disappeared in 1979. He was six years old. It was a t- horrible story. It was like his first time going to the bus stop in Soho. By his parents, and he disappeared. He's never been seen since. It's like it was basically like the whole missing children kind of thing started and that's, with him. Oh, and he started the milk carton thing. Okay. Yes. And what the reason I thought of that is this guy just recently confessed to doing it. And what some of the people have brought up, some of the pundits and stuff and criminal experts, is you know it would be very unusual for someone to kill this kid once, and that because they've looked into his background, he doesn't seem to have done it again. Okay. But I'm not so sure. Like I have a lot of examples of people who have done that. Who've just done it? Who've just done yeah, it once? Yeah. Who just that's like it. was an aberration? Like they just seem to have done some one weird thing. Like when they were falling younger. down, the guy just snapped, and he's like, "I'm going to kill that one kid, and then I'm done." Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. That's all right, so there are other examples of that where and yeah. they. And they haven't found other bodies. They don't find other people. Right. That okay. Right. Right. All right. Yeah. 
Well, and I think we just also know this guy was like working at the bodega near. Right. And I think that there used to be this thing where you'd think in, in the old days, I think people always thought, oh, it was an outsider. It was someone came in and took yeah. this kid. And, and I think more and more we're realizing it because almost always someone just right there, not even if it's a family member, but it's like the janitor or someone you, the kid sees a lot. Yeah. Or the access is always there. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so. Yeah. It just, I mean, it just leads you to, to not trust anybody, of course. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the lesson. That's, that's, that's the go-to. That, take that away yeah. with that. No. Um, so, uh, Elizabeth uh, McGrath, she want. <laughs> that can't possibly be the way she would want that pronounced. Um, I have three really, really nerdy questions that I'd be interested in Ms. Michelle's perspective on. Uh, what does she think of the Vidoc Society? Is that correct? Yes, they're awesome. Okay, what are what is the Vidoc Society? The Vidoc Society is um, the society of some. T- I think that I don't know if they're all retired or if they're active, but they're basically specialized specialists in the criminal field. Okay, and, and they get together once a month in Philadelphia in this really fancy place, and they have dinner, and they hear. It, it's something like out oh, of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yeah. They sit at this like banquet, <laughs> and they they are presented with a fascinating fascinating mystery, and oh, then the they, locked door then kind they, of thing, yes, and then they like, try to solve it. Yes, and then they just sort of give their their you know, and and it's all nonprofit. I mean, they don't take money for it or anything. Okay. Um, is it I, a podcast? It ought to be a podcast. Yeah. If it's well, a podcast. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. The only problem I have with them is that I know people who have tried to get their cold case looked at by them, and they're a little snobby about oh, their cases. Oh, interesting. And they are they all um, like criminal professionals? Yes, stuff? they are criminal professionals, and I okay. think they're very good at what they do. But they're just kind of, you know, it's like they have weird biases. It's like... Uh, They'll only do like sensational stuff, and they yeah, won't do anything if it's want, a black they kid. Want some, yeah, no, exactly. that's uh huh, uh huh. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, racism. That kind of thing. Yeah, it rears its ugly head <laughs> all over, all over the place. Bastards. <laughs> okay, so Vidoc Society, they're probably eating rare animals as well, right? They're sitting around <laughs> having like panda stew, and sure, I get it. Uh, do you have an opinion of who the greatest detective in contemporary America and or Los Angeles? Because Los Angeles is not part of America. Um, and or Los Angeles. Um, no, God. No? Are there famous I, I detectives now? I would wish now? to meet this person. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, I personally have my personal favorite profiler is this guy named Greg McCrary. McCrary? I don't like that John Douglas. I don't oh, like him. You don't like that John no, Douglas? No, John Douglas is very, he's like the, he's like the Michael Jordan of, <laughs> of profiling. And he's show off just showing he, off he his He will skills. tell you within five seconds that he inspired Silence of the Lambs. And Oh, oh. all whatever, right then. John, John he's Douglas. He's got an ego. Where, where does John Douglas work out of here? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Los Angeles. No, for I know. You. He's like he's Mr. Hollywood. <laughs> All right. Greg McCrary like works out of like a basement in Virginia and oh, he yeah. returns my emails. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's got some cred. He's, yeah. he understands his uh, right. he understands his fan base. Okay. And then uh, have you heard about now what are your thoughts about something Have you read a New York Times magazine article about children with psycho Oh, I did read that. Okay, about psychopathic psycho- tendencies. Yeah. Um do I have an opinion on it? Yeah, do you have an opinion of, uh, do you have any thoughts of, do you think children really. are psychopaths, I guess, is, would be the real question I mean, there. I think that, yeah, I don't really know. I was a child, and I, I knew some psychopaths. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I spent a lot of time alone under a bridge hiding from them, so, uh, <laughs> like a troll. And, uh, you, you know, know, a quick way to tell a psychopath, um, what I was Ooh. told once, um, they have no startle reflex, and so if you go up to them and go like... And they don't do anything. <laughs> like that, that's like a that's a way to tell someone's like a psychopath. Ooh, new fun game. <laughs> I know several comedians that I will be trying that on. Avi Laberman, I'm coming towards you. <laughs> that's just a guy. Anyway, uh, oh, is there um, Meg Favreau? I wonder if she's related. Anyway, to the. Uh, John. Anyway, so uh, is there a particularly uncommon, bizarre killer in the history of murders? Someone who is not weird in a stereotypical way. Like, well, the stereotypical way, I mean, there, there was another question that had uh, the stereotypes of the, like, I, you always think, I always think loner, right? Isn't, yeah. isn't that what they usually are? They're, oh, arson, harmed animals, and oh. messed up childhood. Oh, I see, like, not the, tr- the triad. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, is that the triad? Yeah, um, like, you mean what other tip-off would be yeah. someone? Yeah, yeah, is there? Um, 
because she she had that question. Meg Favreau and Rochelle、uh, Ellsbury had that one. Some of the more subtler tells of a serial killer, besides the big three. Well, I mean, I think I mentioned this in the last podcast. I am a big believer in like frontal lobe injuries. I, I, oh, oh, well, that's right. I, I cannot you tell you how many times I've read about a murderer, and then it's like, and then there was that time he was hit with the tractor tire. It, it, it it's like every one、oh. of them had some kind of thing. Oh, really?、Then. Yeah. Okay. So I believe that there we're gonna find out eventually that there's a lot of like organic brain injury related to violence and stuff. Right. Like that. Right. That and I have almost never read of a serial murder who didn't have a prostitute as a mother. I honestly、oh. almost I honestly almost can't think of one who didn't. Okay. Ted And, Bundy. Yeah. Well, I mean, his his. Well, he was also he was raised by、uh, someone who he thought was his mother, and he found out that it was his. Uh, like his aunt or his cousin. Yeah, well, or... yeah. his his he, what he believed was his mother was actually his grandmother,、oh, and his、okay. sister was his mother. Oh, so, right, know, right. It, what about what about?、Um, I'm from Wisconsin. What about my Wisconsin、uh, people? Scott Walker, the serial killer, Scott Walker. Scott Walker. No,、oh. he's the mayor <laughs> or the <laughs> governor <laughs> or the. <laughs> He's an asshole, yeah, 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 is what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but no, like Ed Gein and Dahmer.、Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure about Dahmer. I just it's it comes up a lot. It comes up a lot.、Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. It's uh yeah I like um you know what I like I like a nice story where someone has that kind of parenting uh par- parent problem and then they rise above it. Right. It's nice. <laughs> I love that when they don't when they grow up and they don't <laughs> kill people. That's one of my favorite stories. But、uh, Rochelle Ellsbury had another one.、Uh, how can the average person help kill? <laughs> Catch people who kill others. <laughs> wow! Are there easy things we can do as like a hobby? <laughs> Are there easy? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there's an easy way to not get killed, which is one way is to not run naked through the streets with money taped to your ass, <laughs> screaming, "What's gonna happen?" Anyway, but、um, I don't know. I don't know. Is there is there any?、One. Yeah, I mean, there's. You know. I mean, to live in fear like that, to always be looking. You know,、right. like、uh, what kind of what kind of serial killer might you be? What kind of serial <laughs> killer might you be? That seems awkward. It just it seems like a long way to go. But、um, mm-hmm. let's see. Do to do do to do. Oh wait, I, I went out of order briefly in that whole thing.、Um, eating people seems to be fashionable these days. <laughs> yeah. Do today's cannibals own and owe anything to pioneering cannibals before、oh、them?、Uh, Laura Swisher, comedian,、uh, <laughs> would like to know. Or do they、uh, blaze their own trails? And bath salts is a game changer. Now I just found out that that's some sort of drug, right? That isn't an actual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those aren't lavender relaxing bath salts.、Right? No. People aren't. <laughs> They are、um, they、so、are synthetic. The They're synthetic state,、right? drugs that is a combination of like stimulants and and psychedelics. Okay. And they they、um, market them as bath salts so that they can legally sell. It actually says on them. You'll notice. Not that I've had them, but like I've right, seen, right. But I realized that was just that. You'll notice, but it <laughs> says not for. They get away with it because it says not for human con- consumption. Okay. But everyone、Humans、who's in on、them? it knows, yeah, because everyone knows it's a drug. So they sell them at gas stations. And I mean, what do they do with them? Do they smoke them or do they eat them? You can inhale them. I think you can smoke them. Okay.、Um, they're ter- they sound terribly dangerous. I mean, people yeah, are really yeah. losing、this、their minds. Yeah, yeah. This is someone jonesing for a high hardcore. Because also the problem with them is apparently you do them and it doesn't have an effect right away, and so people do more and more of them. But there was another. There was just like a really terrible murder suicide in a family up in、um, Oregon in the last two weeks, and they found bath salts on them. And it's it's looking terrible for wow the bath salts industry. The bath salts industry is in some serious trouble. Somebody did write. They were like, "Are there a lot more serial killers from、uh, the Upper Northwest, from from like Oregon and?" Oh and, and yeah, I I certainly think the Pacific Northwest has more than its fair share. Oh yeah, because it was just it was the Unabomber from there. Was, no, was from the Unabomber was. From my hometown, he was from Chicago. Oh, was he?、Mm-hmm. Oh, there、yeah. you go.、Mm-hmm. You know that the Unabomber just updated his、uh, Harvard、um, alumni. You've heard this, right? No. He wrote in to you know how like your class from jail right up. Yes,、okay. he wrote in what he was up to. <laughs> He was up to his. He listed his manifesto as one of his Again. works. Again, oh, it's one of his I mean, published it works. Actually, kind of. I was like, oh my god. Has he taken up bonsai trees? <laughs> what What else is happening? What else is happening in his world? I,、uh, that's insane. Yeah. Can you imagine? No. Yeah, it's crazy. No, that's. And they published it, which you know. Wow. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? I suppose. <laughs> 
Oh, my sister wants to know. She saw an episode of Chicago Hope. <laughs> oh, my sister saw an episode of a Chicago Hope and ER, at our location. Uh, there was a guy who cut his own arm off to get drug money for a settlement for life insurance. And, uh, and sadly, uh, because it was a doctor show, they reattached his arm so he didn't get the settlement. But she feels like that might have been based on fact. Have you heard of such an uh, I have not thing? heard of that. But Me neither. I wouldn't rule it out, mm-hmm. but I haven't mm-hmm. heard of it. Could have happened to anyone, right? Could have happened to <laughs> anyone. Um, Oh, any good true crime from other countries? Do you follow any unsolved mysteries in other in um, other countries? Sure, yeah. Um, the know, Soviet Union probably had a lot, huh? Well, yeah. Because the Russians, those they guys. They have a their fair amount of serial killers. It's you know, cold. there's a case out of Korea that's always kind of haunted me. The Frog Boys. Have you ever frog heard? Boys. Anybody ever heard of this? The Frog Boys. Okay. The Frog Boys were five, like ten. I think they were ten year olds who in the small town in um. I think it was actually North Korea of all places. Maybe, maybe it's South Korea. Where they went hunting frogs uh, and they were never seen again. Okay. And I mean, you can imagine this is like a small town, so five kids were never seen again. And it really tore apart this community. And then, 20, I think in the last five years, so it was like 20 years later, because this was in the 90s that they disappeared, um, they found their bodies on the side of this of mountain. And it, it's, been, it's really sort of been this real controversial case over there because... They, uh, How old were the kids? They were like 10. They were young. They were like five 10-year-old boys five. who were just... Which is hard to like... So How it's do you like, subdue five 10-year-olds? I, I don't know. Wow. I don't know. So and maybe they had gig and forks on them, right? They all had them, them forks that you... But a, when apparently you, a movie was made of, about it that's really oh, well yeah. done, but um, I, I okay. haven't crossed my and they Netflix haven't and, and they haven't found anything yet? No, they haven't solved it. Oh, so that kind of intrigues me. Right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. It's so weird, and and I think that there's a lot of movies like that where they, um, I heard, and uh, this is what I like to do. I like to bring up a movie I don't know the name of, and uh, <laughs> takes place in a South American country, and there was a crime happening. Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Sheila Bacon wants to know if you know the oldest serial killer in history. Who got to who got to go well into their, oh, um, meaning. Ink. In history or chronologically, they were the oldest I, uh, by age. She she just said, uh, "Who's the oldest serial killer in history?" Um, I mean, I, the I, first serial killer was probably Jack the Ripper, right? No, oh God, no. There was like the, you a know, Roman. No, yeah, they were okay. like way back. Well, I mean, there's like a whole theory that the reason we have myths about vampires and stuff is that ha- that's how to explain serial. Killers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so, B- Albert Fish, who was quite terrible. Who was he? Was, he Fish? was like a child predator cannibal okay cannibal and he was like I, maybe he just aged badly but he looked elderly to me when I saw him <laughs> and I when did he live he was uh, first part of the 20th century oh okay so early, early 1930s maybe oh interesting yeah okay but he was I, I, he's just the one that sticks because yeah you know I, this sounds morbid but like all people even serial killers mellow out as they age they whatever the impulse is to kill right it gets it leaves sure so they, you know they can't get off the couch as much as they used to or whatever <laughs> like like we all and um people are like oh i don't um, i don't feel like killing today yeah, maybe the tomorrow. drive just isn't there so I, I think it's rare that you have someone who does that in middle age. Yeah. Right. And here's, here's now that, now you were telling me this back in the green room, the Sandusky guy. Ugh. Ha- right. There was some huge thing that happened today. Yeah, have you guys heard about this? No. Okay, so this is like, if it was in Law and Order, I June feel like i throwing something 2012. at the TV, like this is so melodramatic, this wouldn't have happened. Um, he... This is James Ask- Sandusky's the old guy who was yeah. the coach who was uh, taking advantage of boys, right? Yes. Okay. And overwhelming evidence, it's looking bad for him. But the, the jury was sequestered. They left for deliberations. Today. Literally moments after that happened, his adopted son, who has been standing by him the entire time re- with his wife, has come every day, um, released a statement saying, he raped me too. He, he, today? Yes, today, moments after the jury left. So that the jury I was a victim d- doesn't too. know he this. He basically said I was a victim too. So the jury doesn't know this. Uh, so people are losing their minds because this is like... It's How can insane. we get this information to the jury? I'm sure there's somebody with a paper airplane <laughs> and a slingshot. <laughs> it's just like, no, I really to be thought a about that. I'm like, God, I really hope one person, like, isn't that terrible? <laughs> I shouldn't, our criminal justice system is a beautiful thing. Right, and it needs to be respected. Yeah, and, but I uh, just really hope someone goes in the bathroom and gets a text. Oh. Like, <laughs> um, 
Oh, maybe. But yeah, maybe and, Gabriel, you, and you gotta wonder why the time. The timing is very odd for him. I don't know why he wouldn't have just. Well, he probably just he he didn't want to be the one to put the final nail in the coffin. Or maybe he watched the testimony and went like, I can't take this anymore. I can't lie anymore. Oh right. You know, that that's one. We'll find out more later. I'm sure. But oh, I'm let's sure. Just, oh, like, let's I'm really sure someone will ask him. <laughs> yeah. At the very least, there will be a journalist. I have a good feeling. I do uh, think he'll be found guilty on most counts. But okay. Yeah, and that guy seems. Um, he genuinely seems to not know that what he would, he did was wrong, right? right? He seems yeah, he's to, delusional. Yeah, he, he seems to. He was just like, no, I just like hanging out with kids. Yeah. And you're like, but you weren't. It wasn't like hanging out with kids, like Elvis it wasn't hung out with play. kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you weren't. This yeah. wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's always what they do. They mitigate it that way. Yeah, but right. That is incredible. Guilty um, or super guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, John Anthony Gonzalez would like to know who you think the most accurate pop culture representation of a serial killer is. He enjoyed In Cold Blood. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Which I've never seen. Wow. You know, I've never seen it, but I've always heard Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Oh, is a good one? A good one. It's very very disturbing, but I've heard it's very accurate. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I saw Silence of the Lambs accidentally, and it was not okay. It was not really well done, but I have no interest in ever. Nope. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm good. Uh, how about the murder of the Atlantic City prostitutes in, uh, in Atlantic City, I assume? Chris yeah. Murren would like to know. Uh, if you are a fellow crime solver, have you been looking into those murders? Have you looked oh, into yeah. any East Coast I've, Atlantic City I've murders? I've definitely, because there's a, a, some group, some people think that they're related to the Long Island. The Long Island, there's also a serial killer case in Long Island where there's all these prostitutes that were killed. Okay. And some people believe that they seem very similar and that it's the same person. And they're connected. Um, the, weird, the only weird thing about the Atlantic City one that struck me is that they seem to believe, like, apparently all the victims were lined up and their feet were all facing east or something like that, and they had no shoes on. But then they were also, like, I mean, this was, like, real rough stuff. You know, right. These were, like, street prostitutes, and, oh, okay. and it was, like, a really rough... So to me, I'm like, was it really this, like, sort of weird analytical killer that doesn't seem to match? I don't know. I've always right. been a little perplexed was it, what, about... Okay, so the, the killers... Whoever killed them in Atlantic City lined them all up together, yes. and they were all found together. They were found within like maybe ten feet of each other. Yeah, yeah. In like the same sort of day small. or the same. Well, they were found over in the same day, but it was of, like they had been missing for. Um, for over, yeah, they were like you know they were. Um, like the guy went out of risk. his way to bring them all to one place yeah. and set them up like fucking stone. For sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, and then the same same thing in Long uh, in Long Island. In Long Island, there yeah. was there was something. So Similar to that. Yeah, and that was a weird one too. Wow. And now, last time you were excited about DNA, uh, like bringing back a lot of the, um, like crimes were being solved because now they have old access to old DNA. And then um, you were saying that they were going to get, do you know if they ever got the Unabomber's DNA? They d- I have heard that they have they do have it now because they think that there might have been stu- unsolved crimes that he is well, also connected to. I mean, as to. a writer of crime, I can't tell you how many. I'm just going to kindly call them offbeat. People get in touch with me and <laughs> and think uh, the Unabomber oh, has bet. been blamed for all. Th- there's people who think the Unabomber is Zodiac. Right. They think he is Eurons. They think I hear about the wow, Unabomber. They want to put him everywhere. Points. Yeah. Galore. Holy yeah. smokes, that guy. And then of course the Tylenol murders. Um, yeah, I would love those to be solved. That's a bad one. Oh, that it was yeah. a bad one because that yeah. one was never solved either, That's right? That's more his thing, though. I mean, I could see the Unabomber being the Tylenol guy. He was not the Eurons. I mean, Eurons like got right up in your. The Unabomber wanted nothing to do with you. He wanted to be far away and detonate a bomb. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. So it's like Eurons was like all about being up in your face and terrifying you. You know, gotcha. I mean? there's a big difference. So. Yeah. So that is that's an entirely different kind. Yeah. Um, the let's see. The word on the street is that Picton, a Vancouver killer. Yeah. Have you uh, heard about that? God, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that? Have you guys heard about the Vancouver killer? <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe pig that, farmer. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. He's a pig farmer. Yeah, and that, that's the yeah, all he wants. Wasn't alone. Have you heard? Yeah, I think he he's always been known to have a partner. I thought I didn't oh, know okay. that that was like a big secret. But oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. so and and did the did the Picton Vancouver killer kill a lot of people? Yes. Like more than ten. And there's not a lot of evidence. Again, pig farmer. Oh, pig farmer, because like Deadwood. Yeah. All right. It's really bad news. Yeah. <laughs> you know how they would always feed the 
<laughs> the murdered people to the pigs in Deadwood. I don't know if See, you ever and saw I didn't it. have the stomach to watch Deadwood. Oh, no, me neither. I, mean, I, I saw it over a long period over, of time. Like, yeah, yeah. Be, like, what I like to do is your I, eye. I like to watch <laughs> attention television while doing laps around the living room. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, that's what's on TV. I'm going to go play a game. I can be jeweled. And then, and then come back to it and listen to it in the background. Andy, very understanding. He knows that when we're watching television together, we're really on different sides of the room. And uh, good sport. Okay, so um, let's see. And then Nicole, uh, Nicole Levy would like, to, can you ask Michelle if she thinks there are aspects of serial killers... They're coming to get us. Uh, uh, that never get mentioned in TV and films versus the kind of standard stuff we hear all the time. Things that she thinks would make the ser- stories more interesting. Like, are there, are there weird angles that they don't go into? Like, they, I remember, like, when you watch stuff, you know, you're like, oh, there's always a messed up childhood, there's messed up parenting. And then, like, I've never heard the thing about the arson. Is there arson? Um, in some of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is Ar- that relatively? Arson and like the animal, uh, the ones that are best known would be arson, hurting animals, and bedwetting. Yeah. Oh, bedwetting. Bedwetting. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, not all bedwetters. No, no, I did some bedwetting. I did some bedwetting. I've never killed. Um, I mean, I, was, I think that the startle reflex thing is really interesting, and I, have never, I haven't really seen that on a TV show. Oh, right, I've right. read about that um, okay. in, like, studies and stuff, but I haven't. So when, when you say that you're, you're, you're sitting around the house, and you're like, I'm going to look into the Golita crimes, I'm going to look into these crimes, what... Um, where do you go? What now? There, there were a couple of websites you were talking about. There's People Finder, right? There's right. that one that you right. obviously have some sort of pro account. Right. Because I've been to People Finder, and you can't just look people up. You gotta pay. No, yeah. There's, yeah, you gotta look like at twelve dollar a month. Different databases. <laughs> um, but you know, like there's just there's like skills to googling that I think people don't really understand. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> which is just you know some people will just like put in someone's name and see what comes up. But you gotta like put in their associates' names. Okay. And then like look at their blog and see how they met. Like if you have someone in mind. Yeah. You have to go to the per- the circle. Okay. And then often they'll give you information about that person that's not oh. coming just directly from that person. You know what I mean? Can, so you googled things that have led to layers of yeah. of like you're like okay so this is the third person that they mentioned one time. Right. Like, I'll go to his ex-wife's Facebook, and then oh, I'll be okay. like, oh, wow, look at, she posted pictures from the 1970s. Oh, wow, look, he has a tattoo. Oh, wow, that fits my suspect. Uh, you know, uh-huh. like, mm-hmm. th- that kind of stuff happens a lot. Where right. Someone associated with the guy. And you were on a year ago, and you were talking about how a lot of the police aren't using Google, and they're not using the computer. Uh, do you think that they're using it more now? Have you been talking to guys? I certainly hope so. I mean, I think that there's going to be a genera- generational shift. Okay. Okay. I talk mostly to cold case detectives, and cold case detectives tend to be older because yeah. um, they are retired or, and they've come back to oh, do. Right. And also, they or they are just doing the cases that kind of haunted them, and so they're older. So I, they are the ones that I'm talking to a lot, and I realize later I should be nicer about the police because I realize I'm mostly talking to people in their 50s and 60s oh, who, right. aren't ta- who aren't dealing with the computer as much. And right, it's not a 28-year-old homicide detective uh, who probably knows how to use the right. internet. Right, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. so fair enough. Yeah, yeah so it'll, yeah, that'll change. And then, and then, but I like the idea of you can, you can go and like, because of social networking, you would think even a hermit like the Unabomber, like how did they catch the Unabomber? Well, I mean, the Unabomber is such a great example of they, um, of, of dealing with the public, of getting the public's help, because they published his manifesto, and his brother read it and was like, that's Ted, you know? <laughs> and, but <laughs> he was like, oh, first of all, I recognize his handwriting. Uh, Second of all, did he handwrite it? No, he didn't. Oh, thank it, God. It's, it's oh, typewritten, a royal but, typewriter. It, but apparently it has, like, such unique phrasing oh, yeah. that he knew right away. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. one of my brothers wrote a manifesto, I would totally be like, oh, my God, that's Phil. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that weird garbage I've had to listen to at every family. Exactly. Like, I was he like, has no spelling skills, <laughs> and you're just like, do you never read anything out loud? Uh, right. You could hear where the punctuation goes. What is the problem? <laughs> but that's why I, I, I want to get that, uh, this information about Eron's out, because... It's the our belief is like, and I say our like. Yes, the there's a community, <laughs> right? We no, but I mean, the, even the detectives say this. The, someone's going to go. Oh, that sounds like my ex-husband, or that sounds like my father. Actually, one of the main suspects right now was turned in by his son. Oh, really? Because the son thought it sounded like 
the dad. Okay. Um, again, I also believe that there's this whole genre of people who think that their dads are serial killers. Like, there's <laughs> own, oh, the, that the, has not been mentioned the Black to me. Dahlia. Oh, oh yeah? my God. There's like a whole range of books of people that are just getting back at their dad by being like, you killed the Black Dahlia. You're the Zodiac. There's like, it's hilarious. Really? There's an yeah. entire genre yeah. out there? Instead it's of just, just like, being like, dad, you were lame. Dad, I'm gonna be I like, really <laughs> didn't like you. You're dad, kind of a dick. No, no. Dad, you were like the mad butcher. I bet you lame. you created Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. That's so <laughs> Weird. It's weird. Now, the Black Dahlia was mentioned in one of these. What is the Black Dahlia? The Black Dahlia sounds like a romance novel from 1977 oh <laughs> or 2005. I love you that you can be like, what is this Black Dahlia you speak of? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> because the Black Dahlia to me is like, I know so much that so I'm just like, I can't even talk about it. It's like, okay, so, so when did it start, though? Well, the Black Dahlia is from the 1940s. It just, oh. It's not It's not like a long thing that happened. It's one person. His okay. nickname was the Black Dahlia, Elizabeth Short. If, wouldn't you want a cool nickname? The Black Dahlia does sound like, I don't know, like the Mata Hari. Was, yeah. the, was the Black Dahlia a Nazi? No. No, oh. she was kind of was a, woman? a showgirl. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. A woman serial killer. I think killer. That the reason, okay. no, 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 she was the victim. Oh, she, she was, was the, the victim. victim. Yeah. And they just never found who killed her, and it was kind of a very... Um, was she good looking people? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's why. People want to know who killed her. And she was killed in a really pretty gruesome way for, oh, the, really? for the time. Oh. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. And they never found her. I'm taking her. a stand. Anyway, uh, so, so in the 40s, a woman was killed, and they called her the Black Dahlia. Right. And, and they then, never... F- and, wh- and where was this? Uh, in L.A. In Los Not Angeles. Not too far from here. Yes, in Los Angeles. L.A. Confidential. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And James Elroy, like, wrote a book about it. Okay. Yeah. So everyone... So someone said that they thought their dad, this cop, did it. Um, and then, yeah. I don't have right. a strong opinion about Right. The There's Dahlia. just father issues, and it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, again, I get these emails from people all the time, and it's just so funny to me. Like, everyone wants to... I get so many emails where they were like, I think my dad did this. Like, <laughs> like oh, my God. I re-? And then you just want to write back, like, just get therapy. Like, <laughs> Have you thought about pillow therapy, where right? you beat up a pillow and yell, I hate you, Dad, I hate you, Dad, I hate you, Dad. Because it really is cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it. And then I wrote a one-woman show. Okay. <laughs> And at the end of my one woman show it was it was poignant. It wasn't uh <laughs> still cancer free. Okay, so there was nothing to it. But it was I mean, I think that yeah, I think that that, that there is a way that, that people can turn on because then it's the crucible, right? Then then you're like, mm, I didn't like that t-shirt, teacher. I'm going to say that he touched me or she touched me. Right. And then somebody else had a question. Are there are there women serial killers? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah? You've, yeah. You, there, there has been arrests or is there just, you could, can you tell the gender? I mean, I think on, on TV they always say you could tell it was a guy did this or you can tell the woman well, did yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, they tend to be poisoners. You know, okay, because I mean, they they're to not be, as strong or well, no, or physically. Just they, they tend to be passive aggressive. You know? Oh. <laughs> Um, Bitches, man. No, what are you going to do? No, I think it's more of like a removed thing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think... I, I It's it's unusual when you hear of someone really going, like, batshit, violent, and they're a woman. It okay. Just, it is rare that you hear that. Um, right. It happens occasionally, but it's unusual. Is there, are there famous women serial killers that yeah, I should know of? Yeah, for sure. Do you get one? Lo- um, I mean, I'm blanking on some names, but, like, a lot of women... Uh, Eileen? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, um, what was the movie? Monster. Monster. Oh, Monster. Yeah, Monster. Oh right, right. Yeah. That looked scary. I didn't yeah. see it. Yeah. She's one. But I was gonna say. But she won an Oscar for it, right? Yeah. And she was a serial killer. She was. She was. So it wasn't just you know because there's a lot of women who uh, end up killing their kids, uh, yeah. right? I mean that's I mean, not serial that. killing. That's just someone snapping and losing that's their mind. That's often postpartum depression. That's yeah. postpartum depression, and yeah. it's it's yeah, it's like that. But, yeah, and other things. But um, I you know like nurses a lot will be like women serial oh. killers. People will kill um, in his history. I'm forgetting names, but a lot of like boarding house. Um, oh, the matrons of, mm, of boarding hat. Arsenic yeah, and that, kind, that, that lady. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's okay. that. And um, Lizzie, Bo- well, she was oh. a serial, though. She wasn't? She just no. killed her own whole family? Yeah. Oh, that's right. There was a poem about that her. That dad was a pain in the ass. <laughs> I always say that. But he really was like a terrible person. Oh, yeah? Kind of, yeah. For, now, that was the 1800s? Yeah, it was like 1890. So, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that seems, it seems like a really nice steampunky thing for, for ladies wearing like an Amelia Air hat. Uh, <laughs> just out there, just like, I'm going to lose it. And uh, with, a, with a halberd. She deserves her movie, now that I think about it. Someone should make a cool movie with Lizzie Borden. A Lizzie Borden, Borden movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
That'd be great. Yeah. Who, doesn't, who doesn't want some super fox playing Because she was acquitted, right? I mean, so she was like, she lived into her old age. Like, that's kind of, and everyone thought she was and, guilty. Was, oh, and essentially. She was like she, the OJ of her time. Oh, was she? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, and we've talked about this, is the fact that I didn't know <laughs> that OJ okay. did it. Everybody's pretty sure. I love that you're like, <laughs> yeah, what, how did you put it again? You were like, so OJs. I'm like. <laughs> Everyone knows he did it, Jackie. Everyone knows. Everyone's pretty sure. And now he's and you said he's in jail now for thirty years for the robbery. Yeah. Because was it grand theft? What grand theft was that? Why they got to give him thirty years? Kidnapping. Oh, it was kidnapping. They definitely piled on. Yeah. Oh, they were just like, we're gonna make up for it by sticking him. I mean, I'm not trying to him. defend OJ, but they definitely were like, let's get. I think there was a little bit of like, let a little sleight of hand with mm-hmm. the with the. Well, or a little like, let's make up for some. Oh, for some know. other problems. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because thirty years for what happened was pretty. Expensive. Seems a lot. Yeah. Even though yeah. kidnapping, of course, frowned upon in in society. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. All right. Well, that is crazy. Um, Ryan, and Ryan has just made this name up. Ryan uh, Wethrich Bradshaw von Wolfenstein, whatever. <laughs> and I'm not even going there. A guy in Macaw. Have you heard about this guy? This is speaking yeah. of foreign serial killers, Wong. Uh, Chai Hang uh, mm. killed people, chopped them up, and then baked them into steam buns and oh sold them. God. And there's a movie called The Untold Story. Yeah. And uh, but that that's not an unsolved crime, obviously. If they've made a movie yeah. and they've named names, so uh, you're Don't like, know about that one. they're not going to need Michelle McNamara to look into it. I have to say, of all the sort of genres of crime, I I'm not a cannibal. Per- like I tend to just like oh shy away from yeah, looking into that. Not so- it seems to me like so deviant and kind of crazy that it's it's not. I it does know. seem weird and like uh, my friend TJ wanted to know. If- it does seem weird. <laughs> <laughs> I let- well, it because, does seem strange. I mean, the thing is, is when you think about murder, sometimes you think, oh, I could kill that person. Right. But I never but think, never oh, I could eat that person. <laughs> <laughs> that, that never, that that never yeah. crosses my mind. Yeah. But I just... Yeah, and and with with Ed like with Ed Gein, the Wisconsin yeah. guy who turned it into furniture, where it felt right. like art, you know, at some point where he was just like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make lampshades and and cover furniture with this, and Jeffrey Dahmer with the food in the fridge, right. and and their people, and uh, yeah. it just I I don't. Uh, I don't understand, and you, you've said this before on the last episode, where you're not really that concerned about the psyche of the, you're like, I don't need to understand them. I just yeah. want them to be caught yeah. to some extent. Right. Right. You're, it's, yeah. It doesn't have to be a t- made-for-TV movie uh, of, right. of, of what happened to create the monster. Yeah, I'm more interested in, like, the puzzle of the unsolved ones. And and I used to, it's, it's funny, because I used to be kind of feel... I wouldn't say ashamed is the right word, but there is like kind of this feeling that you get of like, I don't want to admit that I'm like really into crime. It just seems weird. And I was talking to this cold case detective and he was very, he's done a lot of like, he was like actually the head of the investigation for Michael Jackson up in Santa Barbara. He's really interesting guy. Okay. But I was talking to him and I said, um, what, you know, I was trying to get like, why do you do what you do, whatever. And he just, he's like, I love puzzles. And I was kind of like, ugh. Thank you. Like, okay. okay. I don't right. feel as, like, yeah. You didn't, he didn't talk about the victims. I right. Mean, you know, and I'm sure that part of it is that he wants justice, but he was like, I love puzzles. Yeah. Right. There's obviously a puzzle here that needs to be solved. Yeah. And what, are there new, are there new cases that, that, like, what are the new things that you're looking into right now? What are the things, what are the cases that, that are taking, I mean, the Golita thing is an ongoing, right? Right. That's an ongoing one. I mean, you know, there hasn't, there's ones that in particular that kind of, I'm always going to obsess about, I don't know if people know about the Colonial Parkway killer. No. Um, no. The, that's just one that was a guy, a couples that were in Virginia um, in the late to mid to late 80s um, in Williamsburg, kind of along the Colonial Parkway, which is oh, okay. scenic drive. Right, right. And um, it was a series of couples, I think there was four altogether, and they either went missing or were killed. And what's interesting about it is they almost all... Um, their car, like their wallets were out or the, uh, the window would be down as if they were pulled over for a traffic stop. And, and oh. it was like all of them were that way. So yeah. it's like, and, and, um, and then... The, all of them had some sort of paperwork out sort of on the seats? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is... That, all that, of them had some sort of indication that they thought an authority figure was coming over to talk to them. Okay. Sure. 
Um, and so that's kind of interesting. And then I, I sort of heard some interesting things about people who used to work on the Colonial Parkway and where they got transferred to and then things that happened in there, you know. So okay. that's kind of interesting to So me. that's some of the stuff you're following around yeah. now. Yeah. So that one I'm, I think is interesting and... Um, can I say that I, uh, I want it to be someone in a hoop skirt in period costume that, it, that has done this? <laughs> Just because I don't know if you've been to Williams. All right. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a tourist destination. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, uh, well, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, but that's one. That's um, one, yeah. Yeah, but that was a while ago. There's not really anyone... Can't think of anyone. And right then you're now. writing a lot uh, on the site on True Crime Diary. Oh well, yeah. And then I'm right. This this um, retired this guy who just retired from the LAPD, Clifford Shepard, Cliff Shepard, who actually helped find the Grim Sleeper. And um, who's the Grim <laughs> Sleeper? The Grim Sleeper. Yeah. I don't where live. Do you live? <laughs> the Grim Sleeper was a, an LA serial killer who killed who was just caught in the last couple of years who killed all these um, <laughs> South Central. And um, oh, okay. He, and he over a long period of time, and they and they. Basically oh, was he killing kinda... people uh, at night while they were supposedly asleep? No, oh. no. But that. <laughs> Damn, I was hoping I guessed correctly. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but anyways, Cliff did. So he, but he, there's a couple of cases that he still really wants solved, and so we're kind of trying to work together. To, oh, neat. So he has some Jane Doe's and stuff like that that I'm trying to get out there with pictures and stuff like that. And um, one's kind of interesting. She was found in 1969 off Mulholland and um, we don't know if she was a Manson family person okay. because it was right around that time and she okay. kind of looks like a young hippie and mm -hmm. so that's you know kind of interesting so if anyone has any Manson connections I'd love to talk to you right uh, I know who that is <laughs> Charles Manson yeah. familiar with his work <laughs> there you go Ma son of a prostitute son of a prostitute Charles Manson who tried to uh, who tried to exchange him for a and a bedwetter Okay. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Tried to exchange him for a pitcher of beer when he was a baby. Wow. So he, of course, had that's to bad to be parenting. That's yeah. what that is. That's not good parenting right there. Uh, Jim Wooster would like to know um, do you uh, enjoy the works of Anne Rule? Who is Anne um, Rule? Have you Anne ever read Rule any Anne Rule books? She's a very books? prolific true crime writer. Fiction? I admire her. Um, no. Oh, yeah. true crime. True crime. She's a former police reporter. Okay. She is most notorious for, um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing inappropriately, but this is so bizarre. <laughs> she That's worked on a suicide about. hotline next to Ted Bundy. Oh. Next to Ted Bundy? Mm -hmm. And um, her friend Ted. Where's that her, sitcom? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so she wrote, so, I mean, you know. Talk about like being in the right place at the right time. I hate oh to say God. it like that, but she wrote a book called The Stranger Beside Me. Oh, there you go. About her friend Ted. About and her friend it's, Ted. It's very interesting and it's well written. That I really like. Um, I mean, she writes a lot of books. Okay. You know, they're right, right. They're a lot of people write a lot of books. They're McDonald hamburger type books. Okay. A little All bit. Right. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. pulp. Yeah. A little bit of pulp going on. Is there? Do you read uh, any true crime fiction? Any crime fiction? I guess it I would don't. Be. Um, I tend to mostly read the nonfiction, but uh, lately I've actually get, get got, into, been getting yeah, into a little bit. Because my husband um, bought a book that I started reading, like the first 25 pages, and I got into it. And it's a fiction book. So. Have you ever read any Ed Brubaker comic books? Uh, the noir stuff he writes? Um, no, but I've been told that I would love them. You would enjoy them. They're really good. <laughs> Here we are at Meltdown Comics. I might have to get you one. You might enjoy. <laughs> There's one. There's a noir one that's really good. That's um, it's called Criminal, and it's really it's a and Incognito is my favorite, and it's okay. essentially a supervillain witness protection program. Anyway, but the the, the Criminal series is are about criminals who okay. who are um, real life criminals. Real? Uh, no, no. Okay. Essentially, once he makes up. Yeah, once he makes okay. up. But uh, but he loves true crime as well. Um, I'd like to get a show with you and him yeah, on it together because he would probably grill you and know who everybody yeah. was. It turns yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, this has been uh, an awesome, a, a really great interview. Thank Is there you. anything you want people to... Oh, there's a question from Wendy Wilkins in the audience. Hello. Do you have a theory on the Canadian foot thing going on? Oh. The Canadian foot thing. The Canadian a, foot thing is that all these feet have washed up on, um, like, around... That was <laughs> enough. I feel like that's an episode of Bones. It, it really should be. Um, and it... It is weird. 
here's what I've heard, and I'm not sure if this is true, that the 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 material and shoes it has changed so that um, if someone was you know, in a boating accident or suicide or something like that, for whatever reason, it's breaking. I, this is disgusting, but it's like breaking off and, and oh, floating. It's okay. like a buoyancy issue. I mean, that's what I've heard. I, 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 I tend to believe like the simplest explanation for most things. I don't believe mm. that there's like a foot fetishist serial oh. killer <laughs> operating out of Vancouver who's just like... Yeah, yeah. That, that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm sure that there's a website for that. But I, there's, I mean, I'm sure there's, yeah, that seems like an awful lot of work. Because, yeah. I mean, I think the foot, foot fetish, well, it's, it's, it's a sweeping speculation show. Hello and welcome to the dork forest. Uh, <laughs> but if you have a foot fetish, I don't think that you're chopping them off so that you can keep them. Right. I mean, I don't think that's the foot fetish. I think you want to just kiss on them and stuff, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, there's one. Yes? Do the stainer in like Yosemite? Do you know the stainer that? in Yosemite. Like, kidnapped for years. Steve, my name is Stephen. Yeah. Right, but his brother killed women in Yosemite. Carrie. Like, weird. Yeah. What? It's very weird. It, what she's talking about is um, this the famous kind of abduction story. Stephen Stainer in California was a little boy. He was abducted and then um, kept alive by this pedophile. It was like an awful story. And then uh, I, it was like eight or ten years later, he, the, the guy took another boy and Stephen decided. I'm going to escape and save. So it was like this big story. It was a big okay. um, TV movie called I Know My First Name is Steven. Okay. Steven Stainer then died in a motorcycle accident. His older brother, totally apart from Steven Stainer, whatever, was named Carrie Stainer, ended up being a serial killer who killed these women in Yosemite, which is just a totally like freak. Weird freak connection. Thing. And I mean, I've always wondered if. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, There's it's a weird one. He's a weird one, Kerry Stainer, because he's not one that you would have necessarily been able to predict he was going to do that. So I'm not really sure what was going on with trauma him. Trauma with his brother? Yeah, I mean, maybe trauma. I think that the family was really, obviously, devastated so deeply when Stephen was taken. So maybe it affected him. I mean, that's the best I can right, right. think that's, about that one. That's crazy, but they caught him, Kerry Stainer? They did. They did. He's in jail. And he's yeah. in jail at this time? He is. Incarcerated? In Fantastic. Yeah. All right. There's one. Chicago Connection. What do you think of Drew Peterson? Do you think Drew Peterson. Um, is that a, is one that a murder? Wife? Do we think he killed one wife or multiple? <laughs> is, oh, has he been married three times? He was a cop, was a cop in the suburb of Chicago. The cop. And his wife just... Oh, yeah. They either uh, slip in the bathtub or leave him and disappear. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um... Yeah. This is a Chicago police officer who's had three wives who've. who've I think it's. Is it that three have disappeared? Or two that have, one definitely drowned in the bathtub and then one disappeared. One disappeared yeah. yeah. He's, um. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's definitely a big jerk. I don't know what. <laughs> Rob Lowe played him just uh, last year. Yeah, um, yeah. Rob Lowe likes to stretch. <laughs> it's nice. You got one, okay. sir? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, the head that was found up by the Hollywood sign? Yes. Is there any, any news about that? Was it like a cartel? There was a head found no, by the I Hollywood don't think it was, sign? Yeah. What the hell did that happen? It was buried. Um, okay. I don't think it was a cartel thing because I just don't think they bother to bury their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Nor leave seems... them on hiking trails. I think that they're like, here, it's in front of 7-Eleven. Like, they don't care. Um, I, I mean, are you asking because of the Canadian connection? Do you know about that? Have you heard anything new about it? Um, you know, I, look, I keep thinking that I'm going to hear something new about that, and I haven't. My, the best information I got that was a little bit off the record was that it was uh, a domestic situation. They, they believed it was a domestic situation. But then I never heard that they had enough evidence maybe to get the guy or whatever. What's the oh. Canadian connection? The Canadian connection is that the the guy that was in the news who had um, the cannibal who videotaped it and all this kind of disgusting thing, he had been a porn guy. He was in Hollywood when that happened. Oh, so um, they were thinking it might have been. But see, let's just blame everything is, I don't on think that it's guy. connected. There was articles written. I don't think it's connected because that guy was all about the attention. So I don't think he would have buried a head and then left. Like he he wanted to videotape it and be his narcissism would have you know. Are they sure that that porn guy had killed those people in Canada? Yes. Okay. Oh, he videotaped himself doing. It. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, and yes. people can watch it on the. I have not watched it. It's the most no, disgusting no, thing I'm ever. Good. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure There's it's only on one YouTube. Person, a lot of hits. But yeah. Okay, a lot of very viral. Related to 
to that. Do you end up having to go to those four sites? For I have, I won't. I can't. I can. I can read things, but I mean, I am someone. I mean, my husband jokes that like someone gets like shot in an old-fashioned movie, like, <laughs> and I'm like running out of the room. I, I visually can't see anything. I get very upset. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Oh. Um, I have a question. I'm not sure if this person is considered a serial killer. Do you know anything about the Inwood Hill murder? The that Sarah Fox at Juilliard student. Oh yeah, yeah. Sarah Fox at Juilliard. Um, there was a girl who, in 2004, went missing. They found her body in Inwood Hill Park, which is like the only park that's still a full forest up at the top of Manhattan. Right. And when they found her body, it seemed sort of like there were flowers. Because flowers, the yeah. And they said, oh no, it just fell a certain way. And there's this creepy guy in the in the neighborhood who apparently has approached people in the park and then got away. But apparently. I thought they did arrest him. No. They arrested no, a guy. Oh. He, he, going and he just went to the police again this past week he keeps going to the cops and saying that he has visions and he has um. these weird drawings he basically either is actually psychic and knows what happened and nothing to do with it or he did something because he like I bet he didn't do it because I, I so many of those guys have gotten arrested and so had to. Like the uh, I don't know that much about that one. This is a northern Manhattan um, yeah. murder with a woman. I have definitely heard of it. Okay, um, I remember the thing about the flowers, but but yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I think that that the people who go up and admit that they did crimes, and then we find out that they were actually released from like a insane asylum in the '80s when Reagan cut funding. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it happens like so often. It's you're so just sad. like, please lock me up so I can get three squares. Anyone, right. anyone's willing to lock me up. That'd be awesome. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. There were, there was, yeah. Uh, I apologize because I can't remember the name of this one, but okay. it was a murder, I want to say in the Midwest in the 30s, where a guy went in and killed the parents first and then killed all the kids. And oh, back and smash their faces. And do you know the one I'm talking? The about? axe murders? You mean in yeah, Iowa? The axe murders. An axe yeah. murders in Iowa in yeah. the 30s? You, and I know that there was like a few different people that they thought might have done it. Is there like a, like do you have a theory? Of I your can't own remember on what the consensus on that one is. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about, but. Um, I don't. I Where, don't in, remember. Like a big city it, in Iowa. It's it's like begins with a V, and I'm blank. It's like the vis. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'll put it in the notes. Though, it was okay. Like a small town. Yeah, it was like it's definitely like the crime of like the 30s or whatever. Oh, okay. It was. Yeah, and it was like in a and very they rural them, area. No, they never. It's unsolved. Oh, it's it's, it's one yeah. of the unsolved. I know you can still visit the place. It's like this weird spectator thing. Yeah, like yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. morbid looky lose. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Okay, one more wait. Yeah. Well, just within the true crime community, is Vincent Bugliosi still considered credible? Oh my God. Uh, Vincent Bugliosi? <laughs> oh my God. Um, Helter Skelter. Oh, Helter Skelter. Well, recent activity kind of shot. What, it, what is his recent activity? Well, remind he's not really me. Political. Oh, um, <laughs> is he hoping to get work on Fox? Is what he's got no, political? He wants to be conservative. A is that what you're saying? No. Oh no. no. Liberal. Oh, um, I have not heard. A friend of mine named Jess Braven wrote the book about Squeaky From. I oh. always joke he wrote a big book about a small subject. <laughs> But it was a fun. wonderful book. But he, I recently reached out to him because I was like, hey, your Manson numbers, you know, yeah. like, let's, I want to oh, find right. out about this Jane Doe. And he was like, have you talked to Vince? Uh, and I said, no, I didn't know that you could just talk to Vince. <laughs> he, he seemed, Jess is a tough customer, and he seemed very uh, high on, on Bugliosi. So that's the <laughs> only thing I've ever heard about it. No, true crime people haven't brought him up all, all that much. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been fascinating. Again, yeah. and uh, I learned things about uh, the news from five years ago. <laughs> Every time you're on the show, and it's always good. And uh, I say, uh, let's have a nice big round of applause for Michelle McNamara. Oh, Go to True Crime Diary. Thank you. Okay, so the next episode is uh, July 31st. I'm hoping to get Steve Clovis, who wrote all of the Harry Potter movies, or most of them. And uh, why would I want to get uh, Steve Clovis to do it on July 31st? Anyone? Harry Potter's birthday. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> the entire <laughs> belt of Harry Potter birthday. And, uh, it's true. If you do not have a uh, Dork Forest magnet, uh, I have some, if you want any. Uh, would you like a Dork Forest magnet? Please. You already have one. It's nice. I, uh, um, and thank you guys for coming out and supporting uh, a live Dork Forest. All right. Take care of yourself. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance, then it sounds like a Mexican hat dance. It's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God.
my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?